Hello everyone, this is Wileam here. In today's video, I want to take a quick look at a Zero E monopod. Been using this for quite a while and it's been an excellent monopod. The specific model that we'll be looking at is the P324S. So inside of the cardboard box is this nylon bag and of course your monopod and all of your accessories are in that bag. What I find really great about this package is that this nylon bag is actually very useful. And the reason why I say this is because you'll notice that when you open up the bag, you'll get your accessories, your shoulder mount, and of course your monopod. What's really nice about this case is that if you look over here, there's actually enough space for a tripod head, which is something that's super useful if you actually want to use the bag because when you actually want to use the monopod, you want it fully assembled. So you can easily put on a tripod head like this Benro S4 and it still fits super nicely into the case, which means this case is actually useful past the point of you actually just getting it out of the box. Now I know I'm making a big deal of this, but you cannot believe how many times I buy a tripod in which there is no space for a tripod head and it makes the case completely unuseful. Very quickly, before we actually talk about the monopod itself, inside the bag, you will get your shoulder harness. You will also get an extra top plate with a thread, both quarter and one inch. You'll also get a metal spike for the bottom of your monopod and also a replacement rubber one, just in case you wear out, I guess, your first one. I haven't really done any damage to it, so hopefully I'll never need to use this, but that's all the extra accessories that come with your monopod. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the monopod itself. What I want to say first off very quickly is that this is not a lightweight monopod. If you actually compare it to my hands, you'll notice that this is actually a very large monopod. It's definitely built to last it's definitely got a lot of durability it can handle very heavy equipment this is definitely something that's important to me because I always want to have products that last for a very long time and you can definitely tell when you first take it out of the box just from the weight and the feel that this is going to be a very durable monopod there is a lot of great features to the monopod which is one of the reasons why you're willing to accept that weight and that heavy dutiness that you're going to have to lug with you so let's go ahead and start discussing this monopod at the base and the reason why i say this is because i think this is the most important part of this serial e monopod it's definitely something that makes it very unique and the reason why i say that is because these legs are extremely long which means it's actually a very stable platform even with a very heavy camera on top and this is something that I find very useful and it's the reason why I took this monopod with me to Las Vegas for CES 2019 it's because I can almost be hands off with the monopod or I can be very close by and I feel very confident that it's going to stay in one spot and that's because of these long legs and because of the metal construction that we have here it's an all metal construction it's a very durable design and I can put a very heavy camera package on top and I feel like it's not going to go anywhere now you'll notice that we have several knobs down here and we're going to talk all about them one thing that I want to show you real quick is to actually fold the legs up there is a button right here so right here there is a button and if you hit the button you can retract them it is actually a little bit loose when you have it so that's not really that big of an issue and when you bring it all the way down there is a little bit of play but once you have it on all fours it still locks in pretty tight so i don't really find too much of an issue for it there are actually three knobs down at the bottom one two and three and we'll go through what they do this knob right here allows you to control how much pivot uh, you have on this joint so if you have it all the way down what you'll see is that this locks the pivot point to where it can only go vertically. So if you want a perfectly straight monopod, you just lock this down and you're good to go. That way it puts less stress on this knob in order to keep the monopod straight. It's actually a great design and really love it. Now, if you do have this loosened up, what this will allow you to do is loosen this one and now you can actually pivot the monopod. And then you can easily tighten it down now obviously this tightener isn't going to be as strong as this nut up here but that's the point if you want something that's perfectly straight you can use the larger nut and then really get it nicely tight and nicely straight and then you can probably just tighten this a little bit and you're good to go the knob up here is actually to remove the entire tripod unit and you can make this into a hi-hat so if we were to loosen this particular one what you can do then is remove the monopod from the foot. So this will come off 
and now you have a much smaller platform you could put a base on top of it and you would have a nice little hi-hat moving on up the monopod you have your three leg extensions this one is the twisty versions with three nice rubber grips in which you can twist and go ahead and extend the monopod some people like the quick snap version some people like the rubber versions the twisty versions personally i can do with both but the reason why I like the twist versions is because they just don't snag on stuff as easily as with the quick snap ones. Now, in order to extend the monopod, all you have to do is twist it, maybe one rotation or two, and then you can easily lift it up, twist it back. So very quickly, I just wanna show you an example of how I would use these twisty knobs and how I would extend the legs when I'm actually using this monopod. Right now, I only have the bottom one fully extended and you do want to have the bottom one fully extended because it would just make the use of this particular monopod much easier. Once you have it fully extended, you can see that I can actually reach, although you can't see it right now, I can actually reach them and I can go ahead and twist the second one and I can raise it all the way up and then tighten it. And as you can see, once I tighten the second one, it's already pretty high. In fact, when I'm filming, I probably have it a little bit lower, say around here, and then I can actually film while standing up. So very easy. I also like to step on one of these legs when I'm actually lifting them, so that way it's actually staying put. And these legs are actually strong enough to where if you step on them, nothing bad will happen to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend the second one all the way up, and then I can twist the third one, and as you can see, it goes up really high over my head. So if you need those overhead shots like I did at CES, this monopod will get the job done. Plus, when I let go, it stays relatively still. I usually like to do something like this just in case, but overall, when you actually let go of it, it stays pretty still, it's very stable. And I really like using this monopod for things like this. And if you really needed to, you can reach with two hands and you can actually get it even higher and hold a fairly steady position while you're moving it around. Moving on up the monopod, you will see yet another blue knob and this knob will actually allow you to pan the upper portion of the monopod, which is super useful, especially when you have this monopod over the top of the head and you don't really have access to the tripod head in order to do panning. What you can do is you can easily loosen this and what you see is that you can actually pan the monopod, which is super useful in a lot of cases. There is a little bit of resistance, which should help you out in your panning process, but it's definitely something that you're going to have to do repetitively if you want to do it well. It's just not something that I practice very often, and I find I have a lot of trouble, but you can go ahead and twist it, and that will lock it in place. It's definitely a very useful feature for somebody who uses monopods. It's not always necessary, but when you actually need it, you'll be glad you'll have something like this. Now, having said all these nice things about the monopod, what are the downsides to this monopod? Because there are definitely a few. First and foremost is going to be the cost because it is quite expensive. But like what I like to harp on a lot for my equipment is that if you buy quality equipment, you can buy this equipment used and save yourself some money. This particular monopod I actually bought used. I believe I got it for $178. It's still very expensive for a monopod, but trust me, you do get quality equipment for that money. And it's well worth it if you're going to be traveling with a lot of camera equipment, at least in my opinion. Another downside to this monopod is that the feet, while very durable, they do occasionally come loose with use. Like this particular one right here, you'll notice that it's very nice and loose. I've actually already tightened these two down, so that's the reason why they stay in place. But there's always going to be a little bit of give, so just keep in mind that with use, they're going to come a little loose. It's very easy to tighten down with an Allen key so that it stays nice and tight. It's just that I've already tightened these two down, and I just left this one loose after my Vegas trip just to show you that they can get a little loose, but it's really not that big of a deal. But you do want to fix that, otherwise this will probably eventually come loose. Another gripe that's actually a little bit more important is that this grip right here, you'll notice it's actually ripped off from the very bottom. This grip used to be all the way at the very bottom to where there was actually no space right here. But the problem is, is that if you actually use very heavy gear like I do sometimes and you carry it by the grip, this grip will actually start 
to move up and then you're gonna have to spend some time to twist it back down again. They really need to put a little bit more glue down here so that the grip doesn't move. It is a minor gripe, but it's something that you have to fix every once in a while. Otherwise, the grip will end all the way up here, and that's a very annoying thing to have to deal with because you don't really want it touching the end cap because eventually it'll scrunch all the way up there. So that's something to watch out for for this particular monopod. Other than those two minor gripes and the cost of the monopod itself, this is an excellent piece of gear. It's really great to travel with and it's really going to hold up to the test of time. I definitely recommend checking it out if you have a camera store available and they sell serial E parts. Maybe they'll have one that you can use a little bit before you think about buying it. But if you need a monopod that really can stand the test of time, can really hold up the heavy gear, and you can travel with it without fear of breaking it, I think you definitely want to look into this particular one.